Hey everyone, Logan here from Taken Owls. I just wanted to sit down and do a quick audio explainer. I'm going to go over a few things that I believe to be best practices when working in the DSP detractor space. Uh, this is an audio based video, uh, and this is by no means comprehensive, but I just wanted to go over a couple of points that people have asked me about or a few things I might have mentioned on a Discord thread or whatever the case may be. Uh, the first thing I don't like is when I hear people say they use percentages to measure audio in OBS. I find that to be very cumbersome and imprecise. So the first thing I'm going to recommend is go over to your advanced audio properties. And you can get there by basically going to any audio source in the audio mixer and pull up the context menu uh, below the three tiny dots and uh, go to advanced audio properties. First thing you're going to want to do, uh, well, I already have it unchecked, but I'll check it. You might see this when you install a fresh copy of OBS. You want to uncheck this box so that you're not dealing with percentages and you're dealing with DB because the dB scale is much more precise. It's less of a moving target. The thing about measuring audio in percentages is 100% in audio percentages is always going to be the loudest possible audio. And that's not always easy to measure or capture. Whereas if you uncheck this and you work on the dB scale, you can always guarantee that you are ducking your audio by the same levels, compressing or limiting by the same levels, because the dB scale works relative to absolute zero. The thing to remember about the dB scale is zero dB is clipping. You will get overmodulation. You will hear distortion and bad peaking if your audio hits zero. So a good basic rule in here is to duck your mic tracks. Uh, I have two because I, I record redundantly. I record this track called Mic, which is a clean version of my microphone with no filters passing through it except for a small limiter. And then I have Mic to Stream, which is exactly what what you all would hear. Uh, but essentially, I duck my mic tracks always down by minus five because then that allows some margin for error uh, just in case, you know, if I'm getting real rowdy or if I'm screaming at Phil a little too much, I'll always have this ducked down to minus five because as you can see, my audio meters here, uh, my mic is nice and clean, still in the yellow, and then I still have my mic to stream pinned in the yellow. So... I'm not even getting close to that red zone. I still have plenty of space. And also another thing to note, I do have my audio tracked out. Uh, I like to record on separate tracks. Essentially, I've put Phil on audio track one. I've put my mic on audio track two. And then I've put everything going to the stream on audio track four. And the reason why I do that is because you can actually record locally to an MP4 to accommodate multiple tracks. So if I go over here to, I believe it's output and recording, first thing you're gonna wanna do in this menu is if you're using the, if you're using the simple output mode, drop down to advanced. You'll have much, much more latitude and ability to change things. I have four tracks checked, which means I'm recording to four. Right now, I have it set to record to MKV because MKV is almost impossible to corrupt, but you can actually record to just a regular MP4. You actually can record multiple audio stems or tracks to an MP4. And I would recommend doing that, especially if you're, if you're an editor, if you're trying to record Phil in the edit, and capture things that you're gonna splice and cut later. You'll have Phil's track broken out, you'll have your track broken out, and then you'll have a combined mix down track that you'll be able to mess with either in DaVinci or Premiere. But I would always recommend tracking out your audio. Recording down to a single track makes it difficult for you to fix errors and uh, audio glitches later on. I also want to talk about the concept of an audio ceiling. The audio ceiling on a recording, or in this case a stream, is the maximum level you want your loudest source to peak at. So if you're looking in the context of a restream, uh, let's take that scenario, I would want my mic to stream to peak at the highest level because I want people to be able to hear me over everything else. So disregard these top three filters 
uh, but I have limited myself to minus five. So if we do the math, I'm limiting my microphone to minus five here at the filter level, and then I'm ducking it down an additional minus five dB in the advanced audio properties menu. My maximum peak, my maximum ceiling for this stream or recording should be minus 10. So I want to layer all of my audio on top of one another with that in mind. So if my loudest peak is going to be minus 10 at any point in time, I need to plan accordingly. So now it's time to talk about filters, filters, filters. Uh, first thing I do for fill or first thing that I would recommend, uh, I would recommend using Chrome if you've got the memory for it. And one extension that uh, no one should ever go without is uh, this. It's called Enhancer for YouTube. Uh, it is a very useful extension. It basically gives you a lot of uh, useful things. If you see down here, there's uh, there's volume boost, there's ways to take screenshots, there's uh, on-screen keyboard shortcut prompts and things like that. But uh, the one I'm most interested in is boost volume because Phil records his audio very, very low. So if you don't want to mess with filters too much in OBS to make him louder, uh, you can typically just enable this extension and uh, it'll give you the boost you need. Uh, so I'll show you here. So right. right. playing Phil, this I should clip so I once I hit I was, it. I Let's see. In four star diamond. My goal for the night was to hit five star diamond. Okay. And it's not clipping. There. It's All not right. clipping. I'm happy to report. But it's still pretty last loud. Night. Okay. So as I was recording that, I noticed that Phil was a little bit too loud. So let's check it out again and see what the problem is. Percent with Dalsim and the reason being. Okay. So if because you I had listen a few here, very lower myself and Phil rates, are coming in at the exact him, same level. Um, back You're not going to be able to hear me him on Xbox, at first Phil. I was dominating, and then I had so a couple sessions where that. I was getting spanked. We're going to so go over here. So because of that, it killed the win-loss go ratio. Filters. Now I've come back months later with a much and better dollar team, and I'm winning limiter. overall. So but he's limiting to minus 10. That's the same as me. So let's limit him to minus 25. So now you should be able to hear me pretty well over Phil. This is by far. Actually, let's do minus 30. I've ever done. Okay. All right. With any so everything is squared away. I am well, well above Phil. So you have to be careful. You have to make sure that Phil is significantly quieter than you so that your audience can hear you over him, but still hear him audibly. It's a tough balance, but I think that nails it. With me coming in at minus 10 and him pinned at minus... 25 or 30 that sounds good one thing i want to point out is recording levels it's very important that you do not clip at the beginning of your audio chain this means if you're seeing red clip lights at an audio interface turn it down if you're clipping at the audio interface even if you lower the gain in obs your audience and you will still hear the distortion it's best to eliminate clipping at the source and raise gain in obs as needed the next thing I want to address is your own filters for your microphone. I know a lot of people sort of go back and forth on various discords and things about that. Uh, so I want to talk about mic filters to stream. So I'm going to go over to my mic to stream track and I'll show you what I've got going as far as filters. This actually isn't too complex as far as uh, a filter stack or configuration. Uh, but I basically break things down into three main components when I'm trying to, let's say, sweeten the sound in my microphone. The first thing you want to do is you want to reduce noise that you don't want on the track. So I actually don't use a noise gate. Uh, a lot of people tend to use the built-in noise gate on uh, OBS, which is fine. It's a good tool and it does work, but I actually find using an expander uh, to be a lot better because the expander basically widens out the audio spectrum and it makes the it makes the lows lower on the audio spectrum and it makes the you know high amplitude parts higher so basically by using an expander you're cutting out the lows and you're kind of softening up your voice at the same time so here are my settings when it comes to the expander or in my case noise removal I've got the threshold at minus 40, which basically cuts uh, everything below minus 40, because that's basically what my microphone tends to come in on. It, t it tends to come in 
you know, just over minus 40, about minus 42 or 45 or something like that. So I'm making the threshold for the expander minus 40. I find the ratio for either expansion or compression to be three to one. That tends to be pretty good. And I would just leave these here. I would just leave a three to one ratio and then set your threshold to the point where it actually does remove noise. Uh, and then that basically will be your noise gate as an expander. And then for this, this is something that I started recently using, a three-band equalizer. Uh, it's something that can make your voice sound uh, just a little better by doing a few basic things. Essentially, what you want to do is you want to boost the uh, boost the high frequencies a little bit because it'll bring out more of your speaking range tones, and then you want to dip the mid and then cut the lows just a little bit because the mid tones are kind of where your S's uh, come in, at least with my microphone it does. I find that with the particular microphone that I use, it is best to sort of, uh, you know, boost the highs to to make the uh, speaking tone sound a little bit smoother and then cut the mid-tones to take out a lot of that uh, either room noise or sibilance in the S's here. And you just want to cut the low parts a little bit to take out some of the bass, but not all. So here's the order. Expander for noise removal, three band equalizer to make my voice sound a little better, and then for compressor, this is really up to you, but again, for, for compression, what this is going to do is this is going to crush your audio, and it's basically going to make the low parts louder, and it's going to make the, the louder parts lower to kind of bring them to the middle, bring them to a space that is uh, easy to listen to, and it won't cause a lot of fatigue. Uh, I set this around minus 25. You'll have to you'll have to experiment, but essentially I set this ar around minus 25 so that it compresses everything up starting at minus 25 and I use a three to one ratio and I make up about 14. So basically this is going to take everything that sits uh, at minus 25 or louder, crush it up 14 dB so that my sound is always as loud as it can be with still being comfortable. Uh, you'll have to experiment with these settings. It really varies from setup to setup, but the main thing that I can recommend is a three to one ratio. A three to one ratio is generally a pretty good one as far as compression or expansion goes. And then the last thing I'd want to do, as I said before in the first part of my video, is you want to limit this to minus five so that no matter what, uh, you are not peaking beyond minus five because if you set it to minus one or minus two sometimes depending on the attack and release time of this filter like this is 100 milliseconds uh for the release time sometimes it takes a little bit of time for the filter to kick in it'll take at least it'll take at least 100 milliseconds for this filter to hit and if you set it to you know minus one you might have already exceeded minus one by the time it gets there so it's good to use some space in between but uh let's see i'm going to show you what it sounds like with filters off all right so all my filters are off this is just uh my my raw audio uh it's actually fairly clean. Uh, there's there's actually not really noise. My 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 office that I record this in is very quiet right now. Uh, there's not much going on. Uh, the best thing to do is to try and get a, as clean of a signal as possible, so that uh, so that you're not uh, fighting with uh, with room tone. I recommend getting you know pretty close to the microphone if you can, and and turning stuff off, uh, eliminating noise in your in your room, whatever you use to record as possible. But let's start turning these filters on progressively and see how it sounds. So this is uh, expander on. So the expander's on. Uh, you'll notice that the signal is a little bit cleaner, and my voice sounds just slightly richer, slightly uh, slightly softer uh, on the ears because the decibel range has been expanded. And then three band equalizer will basically push my speaking voice up and it'll cut uh, the uh, some of the undesirable mid tones and low tones that we don't need. Uh, this is compressor. This is gonna make my voice sound more even. And then this is a limiter. So this is always going to limit me to minus five, but since we already have the 
uh, audio duct to minus five in the uh, audio properties menu, the advanced audio properties menu, we should be good. Uh, these should get most people on their way to recording basic audio for detracting. Uh, if anybody has any questions, hit us up in the comments. And like I said, you can find us on most of the discords. Uh, you can find us on Detractor Beam. You can find us on uh, that being said, and you can hit us up at Taken Owls on Twitter. All of that will be in the description and the links to the YouTube enhancer will be in the description. Uh, thank you for watching and listening, everybody, and we'll see you again next time.